ladies and gentlemen, today and today only. Doo -doo -doo. The last episode's of Ramblings for a little while, because Becca's about to leave in on a jet plane. Okay, we're also going to finish up our little unit on international relations, more or less, although obviously it influences pretty much everything I do, so it's not going to be the end of it, but we're going to stop with the whole theme idea today. And we're kind of already stopping with the theme, because we're not talking about a theory today. Instead, we are talking about interventionism. I'm Rebecca Farnham, this is Ramblings with Rebecca, and I'm an interfering busybody. But should states be? That's the question. Interventionism refers to a policy of non-defensive action uh, that's taken to influence a society. This can be domestically, um, so like economic interventionism, right, is like buying up your own money or like printing more money or whatever um, to influence your own economy. Um, but generally speaking, I'll be talking today about foreign interventionism, interflu interfering with and influencing another nation or group as a specific part of foreign policy. So a human rights NGO campaigning for Syria within the US is not necessarily foreign interventionism. That's, you know, human campaigning. Obama sending aid to the rebels would be foreign interventionism. Um, a lot of foreign interventionism is economic. Uh, so think about like the boycott of South Africa during apartheid as a way to try and encourage the nation to move past that awful regime. Um, and then other kinds of international trade laws and issues are often put into effect. You know, it's kind of like a, a soft um, or a you know, non-military kind of action. Uh, but the idea of foreign interventionism also captures occupations, nation building operations, national security policies, those kind of things. It's not just the bad stuff that happens uh, that foreign interventionism describes. Um, things like regional trade blocks are, you know, technically interventionist policies, right? Because you're intervening with others. <laughs> um, but they can be kind of mutually agreed upon interventions. Um, the Bush Doctrine, on the other hand, would seem to advocate unilateral uh, foreign intervention for defensive reasons as well as for you know, issues along human rights, right? So the idea that, like, I do have the right to, in I, as a, a state, has the right to interfere in another state, you know, for, you know, uh, like, pre-strike defensive questions. And the big and exciting questions for me are particularly around human rights and humanitarian intervention debates. You may remember from last Monday we talked about kind of the core concepts in international relations. One of the big ones is sovereignty. The idea that a state has absolute control over its own territory. A state can do whatever it wants on its own turf. Um, so this is a big reason that England didn't take a lot of formal action during the French Revolution. You know, technically, they're allowed to do whatever they want on their own soil, but of course it certainly sheltered like as many folks as could escape the guillotine and get to English soil as possible. But it didn't actually go in. Um, and, and it caused a debate then, and there are lots of debates now about when should we, do we, can we, how do we take action um, when we see atrocities, ethnic cleansings, genocides, etc. happening in other places. When is humanitarian intervention okay? How do we do it? There's an issue of domestic politics here. Um, it's not good when we see our soldiers dying, especially if they fail to do anything useful <laughs> in the place. Um, but of course, administrations also tend to get yelled at in democracies, particularly when you, know, you see other folks dying or starving and no one's doing anything about it. Um, there's also the question of the double standard, right? So recently, like, Obama went into Libya, but not really into Syria. You know, like, so, who, you know, who gets priority? What happens? Are you going to screw it up more than you're going to fix it? There's a big old quandary here <laughs> um, that's, that gets a lot of attention in writing, um, both for kind of, like, the scientific, like, how-to manuals, like, when do you think you're going to have success? How do you guarantee that success? And then also, of course, the philosophical, moral, like, when must you act how can you and can't you act, given that we still kind of do run around this sovereignty issue? It's a big old mess. Uh, personally, I think that we shouldn't stand by and watch people get slaughtered. <laughs> Basic fact. I also think that we shouldn't slaughter people in the process of trying to not have people slaughtered. Um, there are certainly no easy answers to this one. Uh, and yeah, I think it's something that 
you know, should be talked about more and more in, in the global sphere. And certainly the UN has taken some steps in trying to do that, such that now if the term genocide is used, action has to be taken, for example.